Today's video is on the topic of futures and forwards and how they pay off, so sort of how we draw those payoff profiles. This is a bit of a beginner's class for people just learning about derivatives. Um, these videos are all based on my book that's called Trading and Pricing Financial Derivatives, which is available on Amazon.com, and I've put a link to the book in the description below if you're interested. Okay. So let's dig into today's topic. How do futures and forwards pay off? Well, payoff diagrams for futures and forwards are simple because futures and forwards are fairly simple linear products. Um, much like being long or short the underlying asset, when you're long or short a future or a forward, the price moving in your favor will generate a profit and the price moving against you will generate a loss. The amount of profit or loss relates directly to how much the price has moved. The main reason that we're even looking at these payoff diagrams is, at this point in our classes or in our videos is so that students that are new to derivatives are able to understand payoff diagrams at all. Um, and once you understand these very simple ones that we're using for futures and forwards, the more complex ones that we'll get to in, in later classes on options and things like that will be much easier to understand at a glance. So, let's first look at payoff diagrams of being long or short the underlying asset. So we're not talking about futures or derivatives right now, we're talking about the underlying asset like a stock or a bond. What does the payoff profile look like if you're long or short that product? Now firstly I should probably explain the term long. In finance when you own an asset and it could be a stock, a bond or a commodity, we say that you are long that asset. The opposite of being long, therefore, is being short. In order to short an asset, first you have to borrow it. So a lot of times people read about you know, people being short stocks, we'll say, for example, in the press, and they think that it's just a button, that you, you hit the sell button in your brokerage account and now you're short. That's not really how it works at all. In order to short an asset, the first thing you have to do is you have to borrow that asset. Now usually your broker, if you have a good broker, they'll be able to find someone who is willing to lend you that asset. Then what you do is you sell it with the intention of buying it back at some point in the future. And you kind of always do have to buy it back simply because you borrowed it and have to eventually return it to the person that you borrowed it from. Um, obviously you're hoping to be able to buy it back at a profit, which means at a lower price than the price at which you sold it at. Um, you obviously make money then when the price of the underlying falls. So when you're long an asset, you make money when the price rises. And when you're short an asset, you make money when the price falls. In a long position, or where you're long the underlying asset, as the asset price moves up beyond your entry price, your profit increases and as it falls below your, your entry price, your losses increase in a linear manner. There's nothing confusing about uh, you know, the, the manner in which your profits or losses increase or decrease. Um, with a short position, as the price rises beyond your entry price, you lose money and as the price falls, you actually make money. Once again, this happens in a linear fashion, so it's not very complicated. So the payoff diagram that we're showing on the screen right now shows the payoff of a long position. So profits, as you can see, are unlimited simply because in theory an asset's price can, can rise forever. Um, the losses are capped and that's obviously because a, an asset's price can really only fall to zero. So losses are capped at a hundred percent of your investment. Now with a short position it, it works out to be the opposite of that. Uh, so here's the short position payoff diagram and as you can see here gains are now capped. So the most that, that you can make is if the asset falls all the way to zero but losses are now unlimited because once again in theory the price of the underlying can continue to go up forever. So as you can see in our futures or forward payoff diagrams the payoff profiles are really identical for futures and forwards 
to, uh, to the payoff diagrams that we've just looked at for, for being long the underlying or short the underlying. Um, the investor's entry price is the futures price where they entered into their derivatives contracts and the ultimate payoff depends on the final futures price at expiration or when the, the contract is closed out by the investor. Now there are some benefits to trading these derivatives above trading the underlying asset. For every buyer of a futures contract there's a seller so one party is long and the other party is short. In order to profit from the fall in the price of an asset when you use futures, you don't need to go through that process I just explained of finding someone to lend you the security and, and selling it. Um, all you need to do is you need to sell a futures contract. You need to simply find someone who wants to go long or you, obviously your broker will find that person and you just really have to have someone who's willing to have the opposite position to you. So that's it really. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this or like to learn more about finance in general, hit the subscribe video below. Um, equally, please comment. Uh, let me know what you like, what you don't like about these videos. I've really just started making them and I'm hoping to improve them over time. And let me know if there's other topics you'd like me to cover and we can uh, hopefully learn all sorts of things together. So. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.